What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week six here in the SFL and we are four and one leading our division, the AFC East. And today we take on the London Mounties two and three on the season over in the NFC East. No subscriber players on this team today, but hold on to your friggin' britches because the next two episodes, week seven and week eight, we are going to be taking on multiple subscribers. So next week, taking on the Brooklyn Nighthawks inner division foe. They have Derek Daragosa, QB out of Indiana at the helm in Brooklyn. And then the following week, we take on the San Juan Tigers in week eight. Multiple subscribers on that team. We have cornerback out of Mississippi State, Dior Love. We have tight end out of Penn State, St. James. And we have wide receiver out of the Ohio State University, Nick Stoyer. And if you don't know what's going on so far and you're confused, like pretty much like I am every minute of every day and you're like, what's he talking about? Here's go back and watch episode one. First of all, get yourself caught up. But basically, in a nutshell, what we're doing here in the SFL, super fun, loving this series. I relocated at all 32 teams, every single team to a new area, new team logo, new team name. And I did a fantasy draft. So all the players in the NFL, a.k.a. the SFL, are now just scattered across the league, cattywampus, and cherry on top, I am allowing my subscribers, if you're subscribed to this channel, and you would like to join the SFL as a creative player, I am adding, I will, I can, add you to the league. We currently have 23 subscribers in the SFL on various teams, various positions, and it is so much fun. I will go ahead and showcase the standings around the SFL, so make sure to watch out for your team so you can see how you stack up amongst the other teams in the league. And I think probably next episode or maybe week eight, I will go through the stats of some of our subscriber players. I want to get, you know, since people join later, not everybody joined in week one or week two. I want there to be a good amount of stats, but I will go through everyone's individual stats here in episodes to come. So leading the SFL number one team, the San Antonio Voyagers, 5-0, undefeated on the season, but your Toronto Thunderbirds, that is the team that I am currently playing with, 4-1. So tied for the second best team in the SFL with the Virginia Beach Blues, the Louisville Desperados, Chicago Elks, and the Oklahoma City Antlers. Then we got a couple three-win teams here. We got the Portland Steamers at 3-1. We got the Memphis River Hogs, Columbus Caps, Austin Armadillos, multiple subscribers on that team, Oakland Wizards, Salt Lake City Bisons, Sacramento Sentinels, Vancouver Huskies, and Rio de Janeiro Redwoods all at 3-2. And then we go into the 500 and sub 500 ball clubs here. We got the San Juan Tigers who were taken on in a couple weeks right at two and two. The Tokyo Golden Eagles two and two. And then the sub 500 squads. We have the Austin Lumberjacks who are in our division two and three. We got the Paris Black Knights are two and three as well. Melbourne Dreadnoughts, Orlando Orbits, Anchorage Snowhawks, London Mounties, who we play today, Honolulu Dragons, and Omaha Pioneers, all at two and three. And then the one-win ball clubs, we got the San Diego Aviators, the Montreal Monarchs, Kent Condors, who also have multiple subscribers on that team as well, Brooklyn Nighthawks, who we play next episode, the St. Louis Bulls, Houston Oilers, and then the only so far defeated team, I guess, is the Dublin Shamrocks. Now, still a lot of season left to play, so if your squad is not performing great, do not worry. There's still plenty of time, and for those squads who are performing great so far, best of luck to you, and we'll see if you can keep up this uh, stellar performance. And we got two new subscribers joining the SFL today. Again, 23 subscribers. You guys rock, and if you would like to join the SFL Check the pinned comment below and message your comment, your information, and I will add you to the SFL next episode. But here on the Melbourne Dreadnoughts, who are in our division, AFC East, we beat them in week four, and then we play them to finish out the season week 18. We got Alexander Klebeck. Hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Shout out at Honey Badger on YT in the comments. One of the most interesting builds I've ever seen for a wide receiver. 5'11", 261 pounds out of the U. But don't let that frame fool you because this guy is a speed demon with 98 speed and 95 acceleration. I mean, tell me how you stop a guy 
who can run with the best of them, is a wide receiver and has the frame, at least the weight of a tight end. I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. He's also pretty good at deep route running as well. Not the best release, but I mean, hey, it's going to take my man a couple seconds to get off the line of scrimmage. But overall, very good wide receiver on the Dreadnoughts. Playing behind OBJ and Jalen Waddle, but Jalen Waddle is hurt. So Alexander here will be the wide receiver number two. And the quarterback slinging you the ball, my friend, is none other than rookie Bryce Young out of Alabama. Then we got a new cornerback in town on the Oklahoma City Antlers, who I just showed our four and one. So playing pretty good. We have uh, C. Ben here. Shout out at CurryBen2799 in the comments. Longtime subscriber on this channel, been supporting me for a while, and the winner of last week's Sentinel Sportsbook. And if you don't know what Sentinel Sportsbook is, man, are you missing out. Go check my other series, Sentinel's Franchise. I give out money every time I drop an episode, basically, and that is a super fun series. So go check that out. But C. Ben here is a 5'11", 195-pound cornerback out of Southern Miss, playing for the OKC Antlers, formerly the New Orleans Saints. And C. Ben here, another speed demon, 95 speed, 93 XL, 98 jumping. So lots of picks, I would presume, going to my man. Decent man coverage, decent zone coverage. Nothing that's going to knock your socks off, but pretty good for a, you know, CB number two, maybe a slot guy. Looks like he will be CB number two on this team because Chidobi Awuzie is injured, so it'll be him and Desmond King. But welcome to the league, Alexander Klebeck and C. Ben. Happy to have you on the SFL and hope that you both have much success in the league. And again, taking on the London Mounties today. I cannot believe we're four and one. Now we do have the best team overall wise here in the SFL. And I give myself a lot of props because I fantasy drafted for this team. And apparently I drafted pretty well, but we are going to go. We just saw Bryce Young. Now we're going to go up against the number two pick in that draft, CJ Stroud. I got Zach Wilson, uh, not going to be seeing the field, I'm sure. <gasps> Isaiah Pacheco is injured, so Kenneth Gainwell is going to be the running back. Keith Smith here, the fullback. And then wide receiver, they got a pretty formidable one-two punch here with Stephon Diggs and George Pickens. Hunter Renfro, Deontay Hardy, who's hurt. Scotty Miller is there as well. So pretty good receivers and Kyle Pitts. So I would go change that now to say great receivers. And offensive line, Taylor Luan, who's not even playing. I don't think in real life, Elton Jenkins, the Green Bay Packer or former Green Bay Packer, Billy Price, former Ohio State Buckeye, uh, City Sow, and also Jermaine Illuminor. So their offensive line isn't great. Zach Sealer is going to be one of the edge rushers to go along with Big Cat Leonard Williams. So pretty good there. And uh, Fletcher Cox, good, but old. But their defensive line, I would say, could give us some problems. And Hassan Reddick looks like they're playing in a 3-4 style Probably going to be getting sacked a lot in this game, I would presume. Devin White and Jack Campbell, pretty good Mike linebackers. Preston Smith, another. Lots of former Packers on this team. Okay. And Eric Stokes, another one. There you go. If you didn't know, based on my backdrop, I do love the Packers. Kenny Moore, uh, Jalen Watson. Their corners aren't terrific. I mean, I think Eric Stokes has been kind of a bust since entering the league, but he's still young. I guess still time to develop. Eric Rowe is the free safety. Jimmy Ward good strong safety but also kind of getting up there in age and i don't know why these teams that we play week in and week out have terrible kickers there's a bunch of good kickers sitting in free agency but hey you can't all have a gm like your boy cj smalls here am i right but at any rate guys we are going to go ahead and jump on into gameplay i think that we are going to rock the alternate uniforms which i just love the creamsicle looking ones and if you guys are fired for some more SFL content and you are loving this series so far, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to join the SFL, comment down below. But without further ado, let's go make it five wins on the season. Get down to Thunderbird Field and get ready for the game. I think I saw old Brian Dayball there on the sidelines. So the Mounties must be uh, formerly the New York Giants in the NFC East. Definitely can't, uh, you know, you definitely won't uh, mistake Brian Dayball for any other coach in Madden. I could tell you that much. And here comes Jordan Love, one of my favorite players in the NFL now and the SFL. As a matter of fact, he is our quarterback having a pretty good season. Would like that touchdown interception ratio to go up a bit. But I believe he is either number one or number two in the league in passing yards. So 
We do not have Kyron Williams. If you guys have been watching, he's our running back number one, and he is hurt. So Kareem Hunt is reporting for duty. And right now, I mean, I'm just going to take off with love. Good enough decision. I kind of wanted to see if I could get Chris Olave on press single coverage, but that did not happen. But a nice positive gain does result nonetheless. And I'm going to heavy dose of Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt dominated in the last game in the absence of Kyron Williams. Had a great overall game, couple touchdowns. I think he went over 100 yards. Definitely did with receiving and rushing combined. And I look for him to kind of feed off that uh, last week's performance in this game here. So we're moving the ball here to start. Love to see that. It's first and 10 from the 30. We're going to come out single back and going to go ahead and give it to wide receiver Mike Oxmall, who broke a couple tackles. That is a subscriber as well. Shout out at Rams fan in the comments. Mike Oxmall picking up nine. Go ahead and give it to Kareem Hunt out of single back here. Ooh, pressure right in the middle there from Jack Campbell. But luckily, his uh he, he was picked up by one of our offensive linemen. And ultimately, Devin White is there to stop us. But a good opening drive, and I got to say, I love playing with this T-Birds team. I really do. Nothing. I love my St. Louis Sentinels on my other series, and again, you should check that out. But just so much fun playing with the uh, T-Birds and tar trying to target uh, Valda Scantling there downfield. Maybe a good thing that we were sacked because that one could have potentially been picked. Second and 10. Got some streakers going to be going on downfield. There's one right there. It's Logan Thomas, our tight end. Forgot about him. Darren Waller, our tight end number one, is also injured as well. So Logan Thomas, who was actually on the Sentinels in my other series, in the quote-unquote green zone here. So don't want to waste this uh, great field position. Got to make sure we pay this thing off with some points. Did not even for a second there see Eric Rowe. Jack Campbell was starting to get pressure as well. And that one was uh, just a little bit... Too close for comfort, I would say. And here on third down, if you don't know, I typically go with coach suggestions unless I absolutely have to not, which does happen sometimes. Going to need some time and some protection, but we might get a big play out of this one. We're going to try to go to Olave. And man, oh man, that time Jalen Watson was right there. And we're going to have to settle for a field goal, which, I mean, not the worst thing in the world. We got the best kicker in probably NFL history, Justin Tucker. He will nail this thing through, no problem. But what looked to be a really promising drive kind of sputtered out there at the end. DJ Stroud, what a great year he had in real life and apparently having a great year here in the SFL. Only thrown one interception. And I feel like if we don't want to uh, have this turn into an upset game, we're going to need to change that number here drastically today. So how about press man would really love Miles Garrett to get some sacks because he hasn't done really anything since week one or week two. We were there to uh, stop Kenneth Gainwell for only a limited gain. But yeah, need Miles Garrett. He is the best player on this defense by far. He needs to act like it. So far, he hasn't really been acting like it. And I don't like that. Miles, if you can hear me. Miles, he did hear me. He did hear me. Miles, I'm sorry. I love you. You're my favorite player. You're the best player on this team. Nice sack there, brother. Way to get after him. All right, big opportunity here. Third and 15. Let's just play good zone coverage. Do not even give them a chance. Ah, someone's getting open there. And luckily, Miles Garrett was uh, getting a little bit close there again as well. Brandon Graham also had the pressure. But what a great opening defensive drive, opening defensive stand by the T-Birds. We are able to get CJ Stroud and these Mounties off the field, no problem. And I like, our defense has been playing great. We got guys like Marcus Peters, who I believe leading the league in interceptions. Patrick Peterson, there you see returning kicks. He's also playing great. Just need Jordan Love and the boys to step up here on offense. Come out single back here from the 39. Maybe uh, I need to get Chris Olave involved a little bit. He hasn't really done, oh God, I was only looking downfield. Never even saw the pass rush from Hassan Reddick. And that's a guy, Hassan Reddick, that uh, you really can't you can't afford to lose sight of him. You always got to know where Hassan Reddick is at all times. And uh, he made us pay for that one. So second and 10 here. Let's go ahead and hopefully pick this up. Out of Scantling. I mean, it's a nice completion. 
So far, Love and the boys having a little trouble moving the ball downfield. I'm going to put Olave on a curl here. Might actually have uh, Kareem Hunt Ready? coming out of the backfield as well. No, we don't, but we do got somebody. That was Valdez Scantling. Just led him a little bit too far. Or right, that one could have been six. And again, we're going to have to settle for a field goal. You know, points are... Oh, shit. Oh, God, I completely pressed that. I, I hope Justin Tucker has the power for this because I pressed that way too early. Oh, my God. I'm selling, boys. I'm selling. I am super selling. What a... I don't even know what I just did on that one. I just pressed X. So I'm too busy flapping my gums talking to you guys. But that's okay because I like talking to you guys. And we come away with no points. Is this even real life? I, I I don't know. Pinch me. I must be dreaming. And there is a nice tackle from Michael Pierce, limiting Kenneth Gainwell. He did not ha gain well amount of yards on that one. What I'm saying is it was no gain. All right, let's man up here. Defense playing good so far. I love it. Nice play fake there. And oh, that could spell disaster. And somehow batted away at the very last minute by DJ Reed. He was targeting uh, George Pickens downfield. Not really sure how he didn't catch that one, but you know what? I'm not going to sit here and complain. So great, great defensive uh, play there by the Thunderbirds, and our defense has been playing great. Not going to play great that time as Hunter Renfro picks it up for uh, C.J. Stroud's first completion of the day. C.J. Stroud a little inaccurate to start this one. He's overthrowing some of his receivers. Garrett might be a problem in this one. Oh, nice, perfect timing user pick from D.J. Reed. That should be his second, I believe. Second on the season. And that was all your boy timed that thing perfectly. Only downside is we are going to start this drive from like the two-yard line. So basically an arm punt if you will, by C.J. Stroud. But what a grab from D.J. Reed, the five-year man out of Kansas State. All right, no more piddle dicking around here. We have to get some yards and get him in a hurry. Nice start by Kareem Hunt. He's averaging over four yards per carry, so you'll love to see that. And maybe, you know, we just uh, go to Mr. Hunt for a while because J. Love, not the most accurate to start this one out. So put it into the hands of Kareem Hunt. See if he can produce. So far, he is moving the chains. And we are about a minute and a half to the second quarter. Eight passing yards for the Mounties and one rushing yard. We are doing pretty good in the yardage department. I just got to learn how to kick, you know, not a five or ten yard field goal or whatever the heck I did with Justin Tucker. There should be six. Nothing, arguably more. We should have some touchdowns, but it's okay. Time to lock in. Let's go screen pass to Hunt here. Got some good blockers. Hunt could be off to the races. Then get pushed out of bounds there at the last moment. Uh, still a good pickup nonetheless. Picking up nine on the play and keeping this drive alive. Back into Mounties territory. We're going to go draw play to Kareem Hunt. Why not? And I mean... I don't know whether to give most of the credit to Hunt or to our offensive line, perhaps. Maybe both. Well, speaking of offensive line, Joe Tooney not going to come back. So AJ Khan going to be uh, thrust into a much bigger role here. But whether it's the offensive line just, you know, doing a great job blocking or Hunt finding the hole, whatever the case may be, I'm liking it. But second and six here. Let's uh, see if we can get something going in the pass game, shall we? Ricky Seals Jones. Way to hang on to it, moving the chains. Now we got the ball to the 28 of the Mounties. I don't know why, but for some reason, Chris Olave just never gets targets on this team. I'm not doing it intentionally. I just, I don't know. I don't ever really see him open. Maybe he'll uh, change that on this one. Nope. But we're just going to go to the outside to Logan Thomas, who is looking like Darren Waller in this one. That's about his... I want to say third or fourth catch. Three for 49. There you go. Into the red zone here. Let's just not waste this, please. And let's pay this off. Oh, how about P.I. on Zay Jones? I mean, Gold Dern, he caught it anyways. That was a very difficult catch. But it looked like it could have been a potential P.I. Or at least like illegal touching or something. I don't know. He had great position and just kind of boxed out the uh, defender there, Kenny Moore. 
But great catch by Zay Jones, and we are now within striking distance. We go RPO again. Watching a Valdez Scantling. Nope, I don't like it. Uh, that was doomed from the start. I really wanted to hit Valdez Scantling on the uh, RPO there, but it never really got open. And Kareem Hunt got drilled by, I believe that was Fletcher Cox there in the backfield. Kareem Hunt, let's put him on a little out route, yeah? And then also got some slants as well working. I don't really like any of this. That's P.I. It's P.I. finally makeup call. Makeup call from the last call. Wait, what? Illegal touching by the offense. Well, gosh, dang it, man. I don't even know how that's possible, but okay. I mean, it is what it is. I guess, uh. It's got to live to fight another down, but man, oh man. Don't know how that happened. Nonetheless, it's third and goal, and hopefully we can uh, pay this thing off with some points. Logan Thomas going to be a little bit short. And ball on the two-yard line. They want me to kick a field goal, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm confident we could pick this up, although I don't really like the coverage, but we're going to go to Olave. Anyways, okay. All Olave does, he probably has more touchdowns on the season than he has yards, like legitimately. All he does is catch little short touchdown passes. I think he had like one or two, you know, deep plays. But that little stick route on the two-yard line, it's almost always money. And I just didn't feel confident about kicking a field goal there. And it proved to be the right decision as we go up 10-0. Starting to uh, take control of this one here. CJ Stroud. Somebody needs to hit the alarm because this man is stuck on snooze. Shouldn't really be talking too loud because you guys know Madden is always listening. And this one here just has the makings of an outside run as they're coming out in a running type of formation. Of course, it did it? Oh, 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 almost picked again. That would have been DJ Reed's second. And CJ Stroud, he just, can, for whatever reason, he just cannot get it going. And I'm not complaining at all, mind you, but he is having a tough, tough day at the office and not doing any better is Kenneth Gainwell as he is only at three for seven. That's going to bring up another third down. Not sure what is going on with the Mounties in this one. They are not uh, performing at even a peewee football league level, I would say. And hopefully we can just keep up the intensity on defense and force them to punt or a turnover here would be nice. Bruh. But it's just going to be a wide open Hunter Renfro. Drilled there by Bobby Wagner at the end, but it wasn't until a first down was achieved. So second and five now. Stroud is coming out of the gun and great defense there by Patrick Peterson. No, Jordan Poyer. Sorry, still trying to learn, uh, you know, got two series with a bunch of different players trying to still learn the names and the numbers. But regardless, Jordan Poyer with a nice defensive effort. And now it is third and five. Where is Stroud going to go? Stroud may get sacked. No, he's actually going to find Gainwell on the wheel route. You got to be kidding me. Jermaine Illuminor, the offensive lineman, goes down. But I didn't think that uh, CJ Stroud had a snowball's chance in Hades of getting that ball off. He did, and it was much needed for the Mounties. We're gonna dial up some pressure on Stroud here. We got Yaya Diaby and others blitzing, and Diaby's there, and that is DJ Reed, man. Let me tell you what, DJ Reed is all over the freaking field today. He's either getting interceptions or getting pass breakups, last minute clutch pass breakups at that, and he's pretty much doing it all. And I really like our cornerback room aside from DJ Reed. There's it's DJ Reed again. No, you got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. Give this man the game ball signed, sealed and delivered. It's him. And I was just about to say, aside from DJ Reed, he's the youngest secondary member that we have him or uh, Antoine Winfield. But most of the guys are old, like Pat Pete. Marcus Peters, we also got Jason Verrett, we got Janoris Jenkins, um, but DJ Reed is showing the old timers how these uh, youngsters get down, and DJ Reed, you know, he's not like super young, 
still a vet, but not as old as like, you know, Peters or Peterson. And Kareem Hunt picking up no gain. About four minutes to go here till halftime. Third and ten. Need Kareem Hunt to block. And we may just have like Olave or somebody in the middle. Nope. We're just going to go to Logan Thomas, who is our best option, best receiving option in this game. He picks up another first down for the T-Birds. Now at five for 70. I don't know what it is uh, with Olave. I feel bad for my man because like it's not like I'm trying to not target him. But he just never seems to to come down. Like he never seems to find the ball in his area, unless it's uh you know like a like again we're on the two yard line throwing like a little stick pass or something like that, a couple deep bombs here and there. But he just he never I don't know I never see him open, and I kind of feel bad because he's our wide receiver number one. And meanwhile, our two backup tight ends, Logan Thomas and Ricky Seals Jones are absolutely cooking in this one. I do this from time to time, you know, just to show you guys all Madden skill level, have not changed the sliders. Everything is the same as it has been for this uh, entire season. Same as my Sentinels franchise too. I use the exact same settings. Nothing has changed. We do have a really good team, you know, that, that much is worth noting. So this should be the last play before the two minute warning. Let's uh, make wow. it a good one. And oh my God, that was not even a good pass for me. But somehow Logan Thomas sucked that ball in. Pause. Ideal situation, kill all this clock and score because the Mounties will get the ball after halftime. Kareem Hunt on the draw seems like a good option. He's shoving away would-be tacklers. Picking up a nice gain. He's now at 12 for 56. Like the gun mesh concept that the coach is calling here. Um, it's some long uh, extended drag routes too so maybe Olave finally gets to touch the ball he actually might and he does that's uh easily Olave's longest catch of the afternoon first one was only four two and here on third and one this seems like a great time for a screen pass I realize we have sub 30 seconds left I'm not trying to give the Mounties the ball back before halftime oh Kareem break a tackle look at the vicious stiff arm oh but he couldn't get it about a freaking centipede's pubic hair away from picking that up. Do centipedes have pubic hair? I don't know. Was Kareem Hunt close to picking that up? Yes, indeed, he was. Okay. Could be like 21 nothing, man. But instead, we'll settle for the field goal. This time, I am actually going to kick it correctly. I mean, 13-0. Look, definitely hats off to the defense. Offense, we did miss some opportunities. But that was mostly because of me. Can't really blame Jordan Love and the boys, I guess. Love had a couple overthrows, but the yardage from the Mounties is just non-existent. I'm not really 100% sure why. I mean, they got a decent squad, you know, some good weapons and receiving options. So don't know why they're playing so poorly. And we'll take a look at the Albuquerque Armadillos, several subscriber players on that team. And they won big against the Bisons, moving to 4-2. and two. And get a look around the league. Always nice to see the SFL, you know, on full display here. So, so much fun relocating these teams. It was very time consuming, but it's worth it. I know there's several other series out there on YouTube that kind of do the same thing as well. Um, but it's just so much fun. I'm having a great time with this series. And our team is playing great. I think I would like to make Throw It Deep the focus because that's been about the only thing. And really, I mean... You would have to think that probably the Mounties are going to also try be trying to go deep themselves. So we'll go ahead and do defend the deep pass on them as well. Will the T-Birds defense be as dominant this half as they were in the first half? I can't believe we haven't even called Stefan Diggs' name yet. I mean, that is, again, I should probably shut up because Madden's hearing me and they're like, oh, Stefan Diggs? Yeah, let's go ahead and just juice him up and make him play at an all-time level. Kenneth Gainwell looking for the crease, thought he actually had it momentarily, but it only resulted in a gain of three. Billy Price and his offensive line not doing him any favors either, I would say. Miles Garrett had one sack earlier, and ooh, if that would have been a play fake, that would have definitely been sack number two. It was not. Miles Garrett gets hurt, uh, so that sucks. Hoping he could come back in, but DJ Reed on the tackle, the man with two picks today. Again, the Mounties starting to mount. A nice drive here. Stroud going to send Stephon Diggs in motion. Probably going to be a run, I would presume it is. Gainwell starting to find the crease a little bit. I mean, six six rushes 
21 yards, nothing to uh, write home about. And Garrett not going to come back, so that sucks. Leonard Floyd going to get a little bit more action as well as Yaya Diaby now on the edge too. That one kind of stings, although, you know, like I said uh, earlier, Garrett hasn't really done too much. Patrick Peterson, nice coverage there, but Hunter Renfro was able to haul that one in. We're going to go pressure and press up our guys on the edge here in man coverage. Going to be a check down to Gainwell and Yaya Diaby is the rookie is right there for a big, big loss of four. Kenneth Gainwell, man, I am sorry, brother. Actually, I'm not. Not sorry in the slightest, but he is not having a good game through the air nor on the ground. We'll see if Stroud keeps going his way. Looking like he might. Oh, quarterback. I don't know why Stroud cut back to the left like a freaking buffoon and allowed Yaya Diaby to tackle him. If he just would have kept running to the right. I mean, look, why? Uh, What are you doing, brother? He had. I mean, look, there's nobody. But there's pancakes. Pancakes in sight. It's like a freaking uh, happy hour at IHOP going on up here because pancakes would have been there aplenty. But Stroud, for whatever reason, decided to cut it back in and allow Yaya Diaby to, to get that tackle. And it's third and 12. We're going to send a little bit of pressure here. May not be the best idea, but we're going to do it anyways. And if is this going to be a shutout for the T-Birds? It's going to be a big sack there by Bobby Wagner, who has quite a few of those on this season. And again, the Mounties are going to punt. And they just cannot do anything on offense in this game. This is, I feel like if we score on this drive, that very well could be ball game. And I really just want to kind of put a bow on this thing, call it a day, and put this one to bed here. So that is what I am going to try to do. Now, single coverage, but nobody's getting pressed. I don't really necessarily like that. Bout a scaling, dropped it in the bucket. Perfect ball placement from Jordan Love. I knew somebody was going to be in single coverage. Nobody was getting pressed, so it required a very accurate ball. And Jordan Love delivered and then some. I mean, look at that right in the bucket in between Devin White and multiple defenders. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Any Packers fans out there uh, in the comment section, if you watched Jordan Love last season, specifically second half of the season, I mean, tell me my man's not the future. How can you tell me that he is not the future? I loved what I saw from Love, no pun intended. And man, I wish I could audible that, but it wouldn't work. And nobody wanted to uh, put a body on Devin White there. Two-yard loss on the play. Now, I'm going to have Kareem Hunt block, and hopefully somebody can get open. We're going to throw a bomb up to Valda Scantling. Okay. Didn't really know where to go with that one. And I'm telling you, man... This game could easily be like 28 nothing, And we're letting the Mounties hang around, which I don't necessarily like. It's only a two-score game, you know, and there's still a lot of time left to go. Our defense has played great, but our offense isn't really doing them much favors. So hopefully the, the boys on defense can just hang on just a little bit longer. And I'll tell you what, guys, our defense is just playing like uh, men possessed here. And I absolutely love it. We got everything locked up downfield. And look at that. Who else? Who else? Who else? DJ Reed coming in at the last second to break that one up. I'm telling you, give this man the game ball. If we hang on to win this, which, which God help my soul, we better. DJ Reed's the MVP. No doubt about it. And not even just because of those two picks. Yes, that has a lot to do with it. But he has just been in on play after play after play. Now let's freaking find the end zone here, please. Go back to RPO game here. Yes, Mike Oxmo got it. Can you shake a man, Oxmo? He had a big game last week. Mike Oxmo at Rams fan in the comment. Mike Oxmo. Love saying that name. Actually, I don't. It's kind of embarrassing. And that's, I'm sure, why uh, my man chose that. So thank you for that. Second and four now, we are on the 35, so well within uh, Tucker field goal range. And Logan Thomas is just open all game long. Come out 13 personnel here. Got to pick up some yards, man. I really want to score. And, oh, I needed to touch pass it. I did touch pass it. Perhaps needed a lob pass it. We did have Logan Thomas open there for a second. So I'm not crazy. Don't worry. I mean, that's, you know, 
debatable, but I, the thought process was there, is what I'm saying, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and ID up Hassan Reddick as the mic. And maybe Olave on, like, the corner shot here. Nope, it's going to be Thomas again. And apparently we're going to settle for a field goal again, although this is a big one because it, yes, we'll still keep it as a two-score game technically, but the Mounties would need to uh, score two touchdowns and two two-point conversions, which is highly improbable seeing as how they haven't even been able to achieve even one of those so far in this game. But yeah, I just can't seem to find the end zone. We're still up big on the scoreboard. A win will be a win. But a little concerning that we're not uh, scoring more points. And did I just see Zach Wilson warming up on the sidelines? Okay, so no Zach Wilson, but I did see him on the sidelines there. Thought, uh, I'm like, dang, you guys giving up on Stroud already. And first time we called Stefan Diggs' name, and my God, that was easily the Mounties' best play of the entire game. Now he's pushing people. I mean, look, Stefan, you are still got a goose egg on the scoreboard, my man, so let's... Let's just uh, have some manners. Let's be gentlemen about this. Lamarcus Joyner, can I get him in the backfield? I do, and it's an RPO. And Hunter Renfro, nobody's on him. Trying to juke men, he does. Jordan Poyer finally gets him down. That should take us to the end of the third. But it's looking like the Mounties are trying to make this one interesting. Yardage dominated by us and goose egg on the scoreboard for the Mounties. But how long will that be the case? And the question is... Will our lack of end zone production come back to bite us? I mean, all we got to do is just, you know, score something when we get the ball back and we should be fine. But it's a little concerning that we haven't uh, been able to find the end zone. Not sure what's up with these boneheaded cuts as Taylor Lewan gets injured and that will bring up second and six. Tight formation here for Stroud. Thought it might be a run there for a second. Stefan Diggs dropped that one. You're not going to be saying that too many times in a SFL game. Stefan Diggs does not typically drop the ball. And I think that we just play uh, hopefully good, solid man coverage here. We're going to press up. They got Kyle Pitts out there as a receiver as well. And Stroud, what's he going to do? He may get sacked. He almost does. And we'll see if Brian Dayball, I mean, they, they got to go for it, right? No, they're going to kick the field goal. Okay. Um, I mean, that doesn't really do too much, really. Makes it, I mean, it's still going to be a two-score game, so I may have entertained the idea of going for it on fourth and six. Not complaining at all, as it gives us a little bit of an extra buffer. And now we're just kind of fighting good old father time here. Going to try to take off as much of that time as possible. Possible RPO situation again here. We'll see if Valdez Scantling's man decides to leave him. Uh, if he does, even for the slightest second. Nope, now they're starting to clue in on that. Devin White on the tackle, and this drive is taking virtually no time off the clock. Really want to pick this up. We'll go uh, a little TE attack, see if this can yield anything. Oh, my God, the pressure is there instantly. And great. Jordan Love gets injured. Who's our backup, you may ask? That would be none other than Case Keenum, the uh, veteran out of Houston. And I, I'll tell you what, thank God for our defense in this one because our offense, even though the yardage is kind of there, has been pretty much abysmal. Now it should be 19-3 to because I made that uh, boneheaded kick from Tucker. But why are we letting the Mounties hang around in this one? And why did Jordan Love just get injured? The world may never know. And he's not even coming back. Oh, God. All right, we're bringing a little bit of pressure here. I don't even care. It's going to be a run to Gainwell. And uh, all of a sudden, Gainwell, I mean, his stats still aren't very good. But all of a sudden, he is starting to play much better than he was uh, in the first half, which i uh, not a huge fan of that. I got to be honest. And I'm also not a huge fan of not having Jordan Love in this game. And I'm also not a huge fan of Stefan Diggs. And I was feeling ever so confident about this one in the first half. And all of a sudden, that confidence is starting to go away uh don't know how you guys feel about it but the defense has been our savior so far in this one come on get to stroud get to stroud oh my god Diggs caught it where's he been all game no it's pitts actually where's he been all game he's been virtually non-existent and it's got to be pressure again i feel like this is going to be a run to Gainwell. 
If it's not, it's not, and it's not. Instead, it's just going to be an off-target pass to Pitts. If Stroud would have thrown that with a bit more accuracy, that could have been six, but we were able to stop him. Got to watch the outside run here to Gainwell, so I'm going to use her control on Bobby Wagner. It's going to be a play fake. Are we there? Thank God for the accuracy problems for Stroud. He is right at 50% completion in this one. And the question is, do we bring pressure here? I think the answer is yes. We're going to press up on the guys and then have Zach Cunningham. I'll probably have him kind of patrol this side of the field and look right there. And I mean, if you're Brian Dayball, you have to go for it, right? Yeah, I was going to say you have to have to go for it. And the question is, they're coming out gun I don't really like. I don't think zone coverage is the right thing to do here. I don't actually like anything about this play whatsoever. Leonard Floyd is going to be there. Not sure if that wasn't PI or illegal touching or whatever from Bobby Wagner. But as you see on the screen, it was denied. And here comes Case Keenum. Ball on the three yard line. Got to kill this clock. Let's freaking go. Kareem Hunt. Calling Kareem Hunt. Will the real Kareem Hunt please stand up? I mean, the real Kareem Hunt picked up one yard. Tristan Hill gets injured as well. But why all of a sudden now we can't seem to move the ball? I don't really have all the confidence in the world in my man. Um, so this one is probably going to be a little dicey. And I threw, oh my God. How did Jack Campbell not pick that off? I do not know. I mean, this might be a little risky, but got to try to pick something up. So we're going to go play action. Come on, Olave. Make a play. Thank you. Finally. Oh, that, that could be it right there. Chris Olave showing up big when we need him. Huge, huge reception there. We really needed that. And now we could be in the driver's seat. Dream the dream. Can you pick up something positive, my man? You were doing, okay, there we go. There we go. I'll certainly take that. I was going to say, you were doing that great in the uh, first half. And let's give the ball to our big fullback here, Kyle Juszczyk. Don't really give him the ball too, too often. But I think this is the perfect time to do it. Only need one yard, and that's not what I wanted. That's a fake. That's going to be... Toss to Kareem Hunt. I don't want that. Whatever. We'll just give the ball to Kareem. Hopefully, he could pick up one yard. You would have to think he could. And he does by pushing the defender out of the way. T-Birds now in the driver's seat. Three and a half to go. Can we get this done? Mike Oxmo on the RPO. Oh, do you have the speed? Do you have the speed? He does semi have the speed. He was able to outrun Eric Rowe there. Okay, Case. I mean, going to look great on your stat sheet, even though it was only about a, uh, what... I don't even know, like a negative two yard pass that turned into RPO. And why am I coming out pass? No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. This is Kareem Hunt, Hunt City until it has to not be. Oh, and look at big Trent Williams pushing the pile. You love to see it from one of the best left tackles in the business. T-Birds all but have this thing wrapped up. So 22-3 will end up being your final. We actually scored a touchdown with Kareem Hunt. And then the Mounties got the ball back, and Bryce, uh, I keep saying Bryce Young, CJ Stroud actually threw a pick to Marcus Peters. So this game was dominated by the defense. Now, Jordan Love, we'll have to check on his injury. CJ Stroud never could get it going. Three picks, sub 200 yards, and I guess the victory will go to uh, Case Keenum. Kareem Hunt, almost 100 yards, but a ton of carries, so low average uh, yards per carry. Gainwell. There was never really, uh, you know, any any running game there. Logan Thomas ends up being our number one receiver. Kyle Pitts played good towards the end. Renfro and aside from uh, we didn't really have besides Logan Thomas, nobody really uh, balled out on offense. But DJ Reed with two picks and Marcus Peters with two as well. We had some sacks. Garrett got check on his injury as well. But it was the defense from the opening whistle never let up. And we are going to improve now to five and one. And let's check on our subscriber players and see how they did in week six. Albuquerque Armadillos get the win over the Salt Lake City Bisons. So we're going to check on a couple subscriber players here for the Dillos. We have 
tight end bjorn jeffrey no targets okay uh don't know what uh qb for the dillos is doing but they better get my man some targets and arturo Escavel had a big sack in this one six tackles and played a pretty big impact who is the armadillo's quarterback that's the question because you got to get my man bjorn gino okay look i'm not writing you off yet gino but you got to get my man bjorn some more targets dublin shamrocks get their first victory of the season and we got to check on the stats of the qb jesse buzo jr out of texas he played good 278 through the air had a touchdown as well can't ask for too much more than that and looks like uh, as far as his receivers he got debo samuels Debo Samuel going. He got Dave, Gabe Davis going. He got Luke Musgrave. He got everybody going. So good job, Jesse and the Shamrocks getting your first dub on the season. Man, the good old Canton Condors put up a goose egg against the Portland Steamers. Checking on uh, receiving yards for my man, Braden Keys. He had one for 15. Okay, no uh, touchdowns. And the Condors quarterback is Jared Goff. And then we got to check on our safety duo here, Mike Collins. Had nine tackles, no picks, no sacks, nothing like that. But nine tackles is definitely good. And then Eli Sakowitz, the free safety out of Delaware. He had five tackles, so no big plays from the safeties, but they were definitely making some tackles. But man, the Condors got to get you guys back in the W column. Okay, see Antlers, they're going to improve to five and one. Same record as us. And I'm going to check on the defensive stats of my man C. Ben newly added subscriber player to this league he had five tackles okay and a nice pass deflection as well so you know looks like it was a close game here and i'm sure that uh, c ben was the reason that the okc antlers got the three point victory over the oilers orlando orbits who we just played took the seven point loss to the st louis bulls got a couple subscribers on here so we're gonna check on the big power back johnny waters he had 14 for 72, no touchdowns, but five broken tackles and did average over five yards per carry. So you love to see that. And we also have Flash Parker, the free safety, who had a big interception and nine tackles, but it wasn't enough to pull out the victory against the St. Louis Bulls. But at least our subscriber players on the orbits did play very well in week six. Virginia Beach Blues, they're on a tear as well, and they get the victory over our division rival here so a couple wide receivers they got bryce young who i kept calling his name in this game and josh allen so let's check on first and foremost our new wide receiver here alexander klebeck who had six catches for 65 yards no touchdowns in that one but very big impact and then yeezy Fuentes says here had a big game last week getting a touchdown and this one only two for 17 but the virginia beach blues i think they're also only one loss on the season as well. San Juan Tigers, who we're about to play here in a couple weeks, they took the loss to the Anchorage Snowhawks, but we'll check on, got a, three subscribers actually on the Tigers. So that is pretty crazy. We have wide receiver Nick Stoyer, only one catch for six yards. And I got to see tight end St. James. Look, St. James, if you're watching, I swear to God, I put you top on the depth chart. I'm going to go back and check before I record next episode because I don't know why. Who the heck is the Tigers quarterback? I got to have it talking to Tua. Okay, Tua, I need you to target my man St. James because I'm not liking what I am seeing so far. And then on defense, we have a subscriber player here as well. Where is, where is Dior Love? There we go. Dior Love. Also not any impact in this game. So something's going on with the Tigers, guys. I don't know. I'll have to go check it out. But rest assured, when we play you, I'm sure we will see your guys' faces and you will make a big impact. Subscriber matchup head-to-head -head here. The uh, Oakland Wizards defeated the Brooklyn Nighthawks. So we'll check on the passing stats of QB Derek Derogosa, who played, you know, pretty clean game. I mean, 218 through the air, two touchdowns, no picks. But Dak Prescott, unfortunately, just uh, balled out. And we'll see if uh, Derek here got Michael Thomas going, Adam Thielen, not really Jamar Chase. And then we will also check on the defensive stats here of Michael Briner. Hello. Welcome to the SFL, brother. Seven tackles, two tackles for loss, and a half a sack. Brother of James Briner, who plays for the Austin Lumberjacks. 
Easily Michael's best game of the season, and I'm sure that propelled your Oakland Wizards to a victory over the Brooklyn Nighthawks. Austin Lumberjacks get the win over the Chicago Elks, who I believe were a 4 and one team as well. QB Michael Yakin out of Oklahoma, 200 yards, one touchdown, and one pick. Trevor Lawrence did have a very good game, but it was not enough, unfortunately. And we'll see if tight end James Briner, he got three catches for 40 yards. No touchdowns, but still had a very positive impact in the game. And it's good to see the Lumberjacks get the victory, although they are in our division. I'm happy to see it simply for our subscribers. And wrapping things up here, we got another subscriber to subscriber matchup, the Honolulu Dragons and the Sacramento Sentinels. Dragons getting the win there and checking on our QB here, Rocky DiBernardo. Not a very good game, brother. A buck 57 through the air, no touchdowns and no picks. Brock Purdy played good. I mean, was it more of a rushing game? I mean, not really, I guess kinda. DeAndre Swift and uh, Zeke Elliott kind of split reps here. I guess Rocky also had some carries as well there. And we got a punter on the Honolulu Dragons. Jack Mavros had a nice punt inside the 20. A long of 71. Holy crap. That is uh, Corey Bajorquez on the Browns type of numbers there. So very good game from Jack Mavros. And I'm sure, again, pinning the Sentinels back deep. Had a big impact on them winning the game. Well, we did lose Miles Garrett and Joe Tooney for a couple weeks, so that kind of sucks. We've been stricken by the injury bug, but hasn't really hindered our progress as we now sit at 5-1 and one on the season. And hold on to your britches because we have the Brooklyn Nighthawks, subscriber on that team next. San Juan Tigers, three subscribers on that team in week eight. Canton Condors, three subscribers on that team week nine. So make sure you guys freaking tune in because you're going to get to see your players live in action. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.